Okay, if all went well, you should be looking at something like this. This is called the variable view in SPSS, or perhaps uh, yours opened up to the data view. Uh, these are two types of views that we can switch back and forth uh, very easily with. And in the data view, it looks much like a spreadsheet, perhaps an Excel sheet or Google Sheets, if you've worked with those, where each column is a variable that we've measured things on, and each row is a student, uh, individual student in the data set. So you can see here we have over, over 15,000 students in this data set and over 50 variables. So this is the individual data. Now you could change this. I could come in here and change a nine and suddenly I would have changed the data set. Uh, so because of that, I would recommend saving frequently just in case you do things, somehow you mess up the data. That way you can go back to a, a previous version where it was fine. So let me switch over to the variable view. This gives us a more bird's eye view of our, our data set, um, especially the, the variables. So if I click on name here and then click and drag, I can expand this column. These are going to be the names of the variables and I'll talk about them in just a second. The other two columns I want to point you to are the missing columns and the measure. So the missing, um, when you interview 15,000 students on 2,000 variables, you're bound to have some cases where you don't get all the data. This is known as missing data. And I've already coded this for you, so you don't necessarily need to worry about coding this for this particular data set, but I do want you to be aware, uh, for example, when you go to the data view and you see something like a negative nine, which doesn't seem to make sense if you read about this grandparent education variable, uh, I want you to realize that there are missing data in there. Because I have coded them officially as missing, they won't impact your analyses. Um, and there are more advanced statistical things we could do, like something called multiple imputation, which would fill in these missing data. But again, all of this is beyond the scope of what we're doing here. Just be aware that there are missing data in the datings, data set. The final thing there is the level of the variable. So the three levels here in SPSS are nominal would be the lowest level. This is categorical. It's things that they may be coded with numbers, but they're not meaningful numbers. You should never add or subtract or average them. They're just basically a convenient way to categorize like colors or uh, race is one here. Religion is another one that's nominal. Uh, ordinal is the next level up and this would be um, something like a race. So a, a marathon for example, you'd have a first place, second place, third place, fourth place. And we know that the distance between first and second isn't necessarily the same as between second and third or third and fourth, but we do have an order. We know that first place was the fastest time, second place was the next fastest time, and so on. So that's that's what an ordinal variable is. And then the scale is the most advanced mathematical variable, the highest level, which we could add, subtract, multiply, divide, average. We can do all kinds of meaningful calculations uh, with the scale variables. So when we run an analysis, it doesn't really matter if we're in the data view or the variable view. Um, we would just click up here and we, we could go in and, and do something. Um, we'll get into that here in the next, next couple of steps. For now, what I want you to do is go through the variable names and pick a couple that, that are of interest to you. Um, so just to highlight some of the things that are in here, um, we can see generational status when, when a student, uh, if they're first generation, in other words, they came from another country, or if their parents came from another country, or if, if their family has been in the U.S. for quite a while. Uh, male, female, uh, we don't have an intersex variable here because it was coded back in 2002. 
um, how far the mother, father of each student went in their education, grandfather, some things about the income levels of the family, how high a student expected to go in school or, or a parent uh, was hoping that their student would go in school. Um, these are standardized math and reading scores, but also um, the student's view of how good they were at math and English, some academic variables. Then we have several athletic variables. So if you were someone who was involved in sports or perhaps still are involved in sports, you might be interested in seeing how these relate with some of the other variables. Um, if you're interested in urban, suburban, rural, and the differences between these locales, uh, that could be of interest. Here's some that are more social um, deviance, I guess you could say, fighting, bullying. Uh, here's some interesting ones. You could be creative with your questions. So this is the sex, male or female, of the best friend. In other words, you could see if the person's best friend was the same sex as them or the opposite sex. Uh, and how might that predict future things? For example, uh, people whose best friend was the opposite sex in high school, so, sorry, who in high school, their best friend was of the opposite sex, did they tend to marry earlier than their peers? Would be an interesting question. I'm interested right now in that. Uh, best friend was Hispanic, might be interested. Um, if you're interested in racial equity questions or racial questions, you can see the race of this student and then see uh, whether or not their best friend was Hispanic. Does the parent know the best friend? So how, how involved is the parent in a child's life? Uh, some questions about the home, about the religion that the the student grew up in and how, how much they attended services with their parent. And then we have some, some variables that were taken 10 years later. So everything that starts with a BY was taken back in 2002 when they were a sophomore in high school. Everything that starts with F3 is 10 years later. They're 26, 27 years old. And now we can kind of see how their life turned out in terms of did they drop out of high school? Did they attend any college? What's their salary? Are they satisfied with their job? Uh, if they got married, how old were they when they got married or had their first kid? Are they a single parent? How far did they move from home? Uh, what was their college GPA or what was their statistics GPA? Uh, these are all things that we'll be able to examine in this lab. So if you can pick out a couple that are of interest to you, this lab will be much more interesting.